and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. Today we are continuing with our series of Event Bridge and CDK. This is a two series part to try to answer your question that you always ask me whenever I launch a new video on Event Bridge. You want how I do this with CDK? Well, this is the answer. So in the first video, uh, I will leave the link in the description box. Uh, we talk the basics, how to trigger a function with Event Bridge and CDK how to uh, create a rule, how to add a function as a target to that rule. Uh, I also show you how to uh, send a message from a function and give permissions to the function and all that. In this second part, we are going one more step. I'm going to show you kind of three things. The first one is how to create that centralized log. Uh, I talk about the centralized log for events in one particular video. I go in the details on why you want that. I leave you the link in the description if you want to know why I'm doing this. Go and check that out. Then the sum part you can mm, skip and come back here. <laughs> The second thing I'm going to show you is API destinations. I already made a full video on why and what are API destinations. So I leave you the link. I will not go over that, but uh, you can watch the intro for that video and then come back when I start showing the demo of some, you can come and watch the API destinations demo here. And I also use a dead letter Q for my API destinations and why, and also all that is in another video. So go and check that out and come back for the demo here. So I know it's complicated, but I don't want to repeat myself and I don't want to make free videos of doing exactly the same, but with CDK. So just go and come back. Uh, videos are magical. You can post them and play and all that. I will try to leave you the uh, timetables for all the different parts of this video so you can watch exactly what you need and then it's easier for you to come back. So good. Without further ado, let's go to the code. But as always, you know what to do, what you're waiting for. Give me a like, subscribe and put a comment. Let me know what you want to know. If there are more advanced topics you would like to know about the Bridge, do you want them in CDK? Do you want them with some? Do you want to know how to do a event bridge with Terraform? Please don't say it. yes, because I don't know how to do it. Uh, but I like to... Um, this video is going to be long. Hmm. But I like to make content that you want to watch. So now, yes, let's go to the console. <laughs> So I'm going to start from the same code that I started the first video. That is my uh, some uh, advanced events or events advanced or whatever. Uh, this is an application I made uh, using uh, event-driven architectures. I designed this whole thing in another video. I also leave you in the description box and you can check that video to see how I got here. Uh, here you can find the architecture, you can find all the information of some. I will leave you the exactly the same in the CDK app uh, so you can uh, check it out. But, but yeah, so here is uh, what we are going to build. And then if you continue watching that readme, you will find that uh, event store or event sourcing that basically is a central login of all your events. And this is what we are going to implement. It's basically a store, a table and a function that are keeping track of all the events. So uh, we can go to the code and see that in action. So the code is uh, basically everything that is a Lambda function code. I copy paste because I'm lazy <laughs> and because I want to show you that you can port it around. So it's uh, basically very simple. The different part is the infrastructure. Instead of having a template YAML for some, I have a stack in my leaf and there I uh, make my other infrastructure. So. If you go to the top, you can see I have an event bus and this is the uh, bus where all the functions, uh, all the rules are, are listening to and, and triggering events. So that's kind of uh, basically an event bus that it's very simple, no many parameters. Then uh, you can see that all the rules are, are, are listening to inside that, um, that bus. So basically, 
Uh, if you know, an event bus is like a pipeline where all the events go through. And then we have the event sourcing part that is also in the top of the file that we have a table where we are going to store all the different events in order. I like this table a lot because if, if you want to know what's going on with one particular, in this case, order, you can find it very easily and you can see all the details. And this is a Dynamo table with a partition key and a sort key and not much more. So it's very, very simple with CDK. And then we have a function that it's basic function, uh, nothing complicated. And the interesting part in this function is not the function itself, but it's the rule. And this rule is also listening to that event bus. And it has an event pattern that is basically matching all the events. And here it becomes a little bit more complicated with CDK because if you put a source prefix without as any, it, it needs a string and it fails and it fails and uh, you need to put that as any. So be mindful about that. Uh, and then you add that uh, rule, uh, the Lambda to the rule as a target and you're ready. So if we go to the event store, you can see this is exactly the same code that was before. We can see one Lambda function that basically put something in the database and also logs it in CloudWatch logs. And this is our uh, kind of event uh, table with everything uh, we need. So if we run this with the Thunder client, again, this is a, a, a extension that I use for Visual Studio Code that I like a lot. More on that on my five favorite uh, Visual Studio Code uh, extensions video in the link in the description box. And also I'm using the serverless console, another of my favorite extensions to see the logs after I start executing this function. So here I can see in the logs of the um, of this function that has uh, the logs, uh, the storm um, of events, I can see all the different actions that are going on. We can see the order is created. We can see the deliveries are starting to get estimated. We can see step by step everything. So this is working and this is uh, what we want. So uh, basically refresh it until <laughs> you don't get anything else. And this is how you can see the logs and also um, if you go to the database part, that I, that's my favorite part to see this. Um, you can see the the whole table items in, in, in the Visual Studio as well. You can basically filter by order, order ID, and then you can only see uh, things for that particular order. So I will get the order ID. And this is exactly what we did uh, in the previous video. So this has not changed. We can just filter by that order and you can see all the steps order created, either reserved and the crowd. This is all the steps that the function goes through. So that's good. Uh, the next part is the API destination. So as I mentioned, go and check that video on API destinations if you want to know more. But basically API destinations are a target in a rule that instead of matching a Lambda, they're calling a third party API. So that's what we are going to do. And, and when we are building these event uh, API destinations, they have multiple parts. So uh, multiple resources and, and you will see them. all. So we want in our delivery service because our delivery uh, service is a third party service and we will want to send them an API saying, okay, can you start the delivery for this item to this customer with all this information? Can you do that? So we want to send them a message when uh, that's the case. So when um, the delivery starts, then we send the message to the third party using AP, uh, event bridge. So for that, we are building this API destination. So you can see there in the in the tables that the mark delivery has started, starts the delivery, and basically that's the one that is calling the, the third party. So we can see the first part I would like to mention is the rule. So in the rule, you can see that it's mark delivery has started. So this rule gets triggered when there is an event with mark uh, delivery started. And then we are adding to the rule the API destination. So the target for this rule is the API destination. And what is the API destination? Well, uh, you can see the definition a little bit on the top. So an API destination is basically a, a connection, an endpoint, an HTTP method, and then some parameters for rate limits. In this case, the endpoint is a third party site that allows me to send requests and we can see them. So I'm using this webhooks.site. We can uh, use this as a parameter, so it's easier for you. But now for this example, I, I just put it here. 
then we are sending a message with the method post and then we are creating a connection. And this connection, uh, you can see it as well uh, later and you can see here uh, the definition of the connection. So the connection is basically the security aspect. We have multiple ways to do security when using API uh, destinations. And in this case, I'm using API key with a name of the key and a secret. And in order to get this working in your accounts, you need to have the secret creator in your secret manager. So basically then uh, the API destination is using this uh, security connection with this API and uh, value to connect to that endpoint in that method. And it uh, has a rate limit, so it doesn't bombard the endpoint. So, you know, everything is serverless except the third party things. They don't scale sometimes like that. Then we have a dead letter queue. And a dead letter queue, it's something that is super important when we are working with the API destinations, because if the mes uh, message cannot be reached to the API destinations, to third party destinations, then the message will be lost. And in order to catch all the messages and no message can get lost in this process, we add a dead letter queue to uh, collect those. So I just the defining a new queue. And when we are adding the target, you can see that we are the API destination as a target. And also we can attach the queue as a dead letter queue. And we can say, okay, try to uh, send it four times. And if you can't, then uh, send it to, to, to the dead letter queue. So that's basically it. We can see the whole thing in, in, in progress. So I executed that, uh, I created a new order and then I can see in the webhook uh, a site that a new order arrives there, it arrived. And we can see that in the post, uh, there is the event, the whole event that we are sending. Uh, so everything is working. And if we, for any reason, give a wrong URL, then the queue will catch it and we will see the um, item in the queue. If you want to see how this looks in the AWS console, well, it looks like always uh, we open event bridge. We can go and see the different event buses. The, here we have the CK1, we have all the rules. You can see the API rule that we just created. And you can see there that there is uh, the event pattern, the different target that in this case is an API destination. We have the dead letter queue there as well uh, listed. So everything that you define as infrastructure as code is here. We can also see the um, store event rule that the one that gets triggered all the time. And here it is. We can see the function that gets triggered and uh, we can see the monitoring, for example, for each rule, how many times it got triggered and when and all the, that information. You can uh, see this also in CloudWatch metrics and you can uh, deep dive in all the metrics if you're interested in. And that's it for me for today. I think I covered the event reach and CDK questions you have. If you have more, let me know. And I'll see you in another episode of Wuba. Ciao, ciao.